All right, the music means it's time for Animal Talk. It's America's Pet Show, helping you with your pets and having some fun along the way. Some of the best doggone people on the planet. I'm Jamie Flanagan. And I'm Brian Donovan, but my friends call me the Viceroy. <laughs> Here it is, Animal Talk. All right. And uh, we're back, right? It's been a little bit of a hiatus, a much longer hiatus. Yeah, I had to stretch for out for this because I, I'm out of shape. You could pull a hammy <laughs> if you're not careful. <laughs> well, if we do it right, I may. So it's been a long time. We've been posting uh, rewinds for people to listen to some of the old uh, interviews that we've done and some of the fun that we've had in, in past years. And those have been uh, uh, pretty, darn, pretty darn cool. We just uh, posted the Bo Derek one. Yep. Uh, that was fun. So uh, if you check out our, our SoundCloud and the iTunes, there's a ton of old celebrity interviews. But uh, new content. Don't call it a comeback. No, no, <laughs> we never really went anywhere. It was, it was always just kind of. Uh, we've been here the whole time. <laughs> our, we just forgot to turn the mics off. <laughs> well, in, you know, in fairness, us, the power was shut off for a couple of years because <laughs> someone forgot to pay the bill. Oops. Oh, but uh, yeah, we're just, we're just hey, we're just back to have some have some fun and and help people with their with their pets. So people send uh, in emails, uh, and they find us through the uh, interweb, animaltalkradio.com dot com, and uh, on Facebook and uh, Twitter, Animal Talk Radio. It's all just Animal Talk Radio. Wherever you want to try to find us, and uh, they'll send us emails and stuff. And uh, usually, a pretty good way to have your email read on the show is to have a ridiculous name. Or send a pic. <laughs> that, that, that works too. This one, this one, Brian, it comes from Butt Cheeks. Butt Cheeks. You've got mail, baby. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Dear Animal Talk, Skip is an eight year old, three legged mix, lab and border collie, I believe. Question mark, parentheses. I rescued him 1.5 years ago. <laughs> well, he's got three legs, so he didn't rescue him soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. He barks nonstop. At mm-hmm. the dog park, singling out one dog and chases it nonstop. His body language appears to be mostly playful, but the bark is fairly intense and sometimes in the face of the other dog. In your face, dog. <laughs> anyway, he is definitely the loudest one there. So much so, people have commented. I have observed other dogs roll on their backs and submit. Question mark in parentheses. But mm-hmm. uh, his barking and harassment never ceases. What's going on? Anything I can do? Uh, I rarely go to the dog park anymore because it's annoying for everyone, uh, ah. dogs included. Thanks. So the problem is interfering with with her her lifestyle. Butt cheeks. Butt cheeks. <laughs> that, why, why did I say her? <laughs> Dear butt cheeks. That definitely sounds like a fifteen year old boy. Why would I say <laughs> her? I don't know. Hope wishful thinking. Um, well, first of all, you know the the question is, and let me ask you this, Jamie. Um, My first question when someone wants to change their dog's behavior is, what would you like your dog to do? (laughs) Okay. Now, if I were to ask you, if that was your dog, I said, Jamie, what would you like your dog to do? What would your answer be? Sit obediently by my side. Okay. But but I've played this game before. (laughs) Yes. So Um, that... that, I would say not bark. Yes. And people will say not bark and be a a jerk face to the other dogs. Right. Right. So when you you begin by saying, I want my dog to not, or I'd like my dog to act right, or I want him to settle down, you got to have something specific. If you don't then it's hard to teach something that's kind of nebulous or something that's not really a specific action. I want him to be nice. I want him to be nice. <laughs> you know, in, his, in, in dog language, he, might, he may be, you know, n- being nice, right? But uh, So we have to replace it with another behavior. In order to replace it, you have to know what you want to do, and you have to, uh, you can't just tell your dog no. I mean, you can in some situations, but you, you, you really should replace it with something else. So the dog is obviously, and it was just one, did I, did I, listen, did I hear that right? It's not like I was listening to what you were saying. I don't but know. Did it I hear a, it, it was right? a three-legged dog, one and a half, uh, one point five years old. <laughs> but he was just barking at one particular dog in the in the in the park, right? Oh no, he's eight years old. He singles out one dog each time. He singles out one dog. Makes making somebody his bitch each and every time. Okay. He's like, today is your day. Now, see, when I do that at the bar, all you have to do is point <laughs> me in a different direction, and, <laughs> and I forget all about the person I was I was barking at. So uh, what you want to do is you want to try to make a, a different association with that dog. So one thing that works really, really well is, um, okay, the, the dog sees the other dog. For some reason, it's getting, getting his ire up, and he's just, uh, you know, he's, he's keyed in. But if you associate that with something else, for instance, when he sees the other dog, maybe you uh, offer him a little treat. Mm. Okay, so it takes the dog's mind off the other dog, but it also changes the association he has with that dog. Right. Um, years ago, I was in the hospital. 
And uh, when you were born, that's a long time. <laughs> well, it was, a, it was a little bit. Uh, uh, it was about when I was 18 years old. Oh, I had okay. to, I had a, a procedure that was very painful. But, okay. So um, the the nurse gave me this button that I could push <laughs> to get to. So she would come in and get a, give me a shot of some kind of. Oh, uh, you know, it wasn't a self dispenser. No, oh, no, it wasn't. And no, that, there yet? It was the old days. Okay, it was, it was the old days. So they would bring a blowgun in and <laughs> shoot me from about 12 feet away from behind a bush. No, so um, uh, I said, well, I'm not going to be using that. Right, because uh, I don't, I don't like needles. Sure. Okay. So, um, oh yeah. Okay. But the pain, the pain got to the point where you know uh, the needle was preferable to the pain. So I started associating the needle with something good. Okay. And that's how I became a heroin addict. <laughs> well, <laughs> just want to see if you're listening. Yeah. You're... <laughs> no, it, and and so it ch- it changed my association with with yeah. what the needle was because it was there to give me relief rather than. Right. Cause pain. So uh, it, it's very similar with dogs. If you can associate it with something else, and sometimes all it takes is a treat. But you have to have leverage on the dog, which means if you offer the dog a treat, but he still is barking at the other dog, you don't have leverage. All right. So, you you know, you make sure the dog is very hungry when you go to the dog park. Okay. Yeah. So keep him off food for two, three days or something like that? Uh, well, maybe not three days. <laughs> the morning, maybe. Maybe a day and a half. Okay. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe just the morning. And then, uh, yeah, when you go to the... Uh, the, the, the dog park, have something that the dog doesn't normally get, like maybe a little piece of cheese. It doesn't necessarily have to be something healthy for him. I mean, right. you know, a lot of times the treats are the things that aren't healthy, right? So, but it's just all it is Back is a quick shot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a quick shot of something good to offset whatever he's, um, uh, he's ex- you know, uh, upset with that the other dog about. So um, that's, that's it in a nutshell, and you have to be consistent with it. Um, maybe take him there two, three, four days in a row so you, you st- instill that habit so the dog will start... Once he sees that dog, he's going to associate it with something else. He'll come to you for the treat. Problem solved. All right. Right on. All right, we got another one here. Again, uh, Feral Druid sends this one into us. Ah, a chain letter. Ah, I touched it. I touched it. Ah! 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 All right, so we're moving into a new house in a month. We live in West Central Canada, so the winters are long and snowy. It was a dark, snowy night. Mm. All right. Uh, access to the backyard at the new house is basically just off the deck, which has a significant set of stairs going down. We have a greyhound who is not great on slick floors, and for obvious reasons, we can't use salt uh, or de-icer on the stairs to keep them ice-free. Do people have any suggestions on how to uh, keep her safe on the stairs? I was thinking sticky traction pads or something, but uh, if those get icy, that won't help. Obviously, uh, sh- we can shovel, uh, but fellow fellow northerners <laughs> just lazy. can say, you know, <laughs> ice can still be an issue, yeah, and I'm pretty darn lazy. So she'll probably be fine on the stairs, but my husband is quite worried about it. Uh, what would your suggestion be? Okay, so I didn't, I didn't get a, a complete architectural drawing of this house, <laughs> no, no. although we got a pretty good description. So yeah. the dog has to go down some stairs. Yeah, it's a greyhound. It, it's a greyhound. Uh, first of all, what are you doing with a greyhound in Western <laughs> Canada? <laughs> <laughs> if, if, you know, I, I complain about people dressing up their animals and putting sweaters on their dogs. This dog's going to need a sweater. Yeah, this okay. dog's going to need mucklucks. <laughs> so, I don't know, sand maybe, but... Uh, um, you, you, you know, the thing is, it, it brings up a real good point, kind of not, not uh, too different than the other one, the associations. We were talking about uh, uh, creating associations. If the dog starts associating going outside with slipping and sliding down the stairs, yeah, yeah. it could actually cause a housebreaking problem. You know, so um, you, you have to make sure that uh, uh, it's easy for them. And being a greyhound, you know, it's a sighthound. And the sighthounds have very little, they have, have almost no fat. So they don't like going outside when it's cold anyway. So, um, yeah, you, you, you got to make sure that the, the, the stairs are, are cleaned up, maybe put some sand on it. Uh, but in any event, yeah, you can, you're at risk of uh, uh, causing more problems if you don't make it a pleasant experience for the dog. Um, again, you know, we can use the treats like we, uh, we talked about before to make it something, something nice. Um, yeah, they sell the, the, the boots for dogs. You yeah, know, and they, some, of them, some of them do have uh, traction, like little... You get those like little ninja mitts for yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can actually climb up a wall. <laughs> suction cups on them. <laughs> there you go. Tie some suction oh, cups to his little feet. Oh, my dog peed on the wall again. <laughs> peed on the ceiling again. Uh, with his leg on the chandelier. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that would be my... Uh, that would be my... You know... Um, my ADD is not going to let me uh, 
put this off for too much longer. I did have a question for you, um, <laughs> okay, Jamie. Because I, I, I stood up in the middle of that and walked away. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Uh, we're firing up the podcast here again and testing out new configurations. And I didn't plug the laptop in. And all of a sudden, it was like, your battery will die in 30 <laughs> seconds. And I'm like, oh, we're recording. Oh, crap. And we're lying. It's well, anyway. fortunately, right. this question that I'm going to post you has That's nothing to do with the, with the email. So sure, you, sure. So it's, it's, it's okay that you weren't paying the least bit of attention to our, our project here. <laughs> so here's my question. I, I've read some articles and some news stories over the past, I don't know, it just seemed, this, this, it seems to be popping up about, um, uh, let me ask you, do you think that we have a, a right, we have a right to own a pet? What's, what's your knee-jerk reaction to that? Um, now, when I say right, Jamie, uh, I, it's right up there with uh, pursuit of happiness and sure. and access to affordable porn. So, <laughs> so, so do you think it, it, it rises to that level? Like, I have a God given right to own well, do you a, have a three toed, a... you know, uh, salamander. <sighs> I, I I I liken it to: Do you have a right to own a car? Do you have a right to own clothing? Because um, and, and again, for a pet show, uh, click. <laughs> uh, I'm a huge animal advocate. Yeah, I'm, I'm massively into animal welfare, animal rights. You know, an yeah. ant having all the rights that a person does uh, is different. So uh, in, in, in many courts of law today, pets are property. Right. And, right. and yeah, they and, still have that, that status. That, that's changing, though. I mean, you, um, in, in some, uh, you know, uh, in, in, again, in some news stories that you read, right. that's changing. If right. you notice, even the language, uh, when if somebody, you know, unfortunately does something like uh, they, they happen to, uh, uh, you know, harm an animal or kill an animal. Sure, sure. You'll you'll read it's uh the the, the verbiage is murdered right yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah. It, and that that was never the case before it was sure. you know well that's in the media but is that in court is that in court uh well yeah, right but I mean it, it kind of is seeping in it, it looks sure. like it's marching that direction I'm sure attorneys right? are pushing it yeah um but it, will it would it be part of the court record but uh, back to the so, question though so do you think do you, you have, have right a, absolutely yeah. yes you yes. have a right to own a pet you do you need to be but and then it goes to responsible pet ownership. Um, if you don't have the ways and means to maintain a car or sure. take care of your pet, then you don't get that right because you gotta be, you got to be able to take care of them. But here's the twist. Okay, so okay. you have a right. Now, the, the, this particular news story that I'm looking at right now, uh, and it looks like kind of, uh, you know, this millennial kind of whining, you know, like, I sure. have my rights to... Uh, so what uh, she's complaining about is that um, she's renting, Jamie. Mm. She's renting... And she's saying the landlord yes. must give her permission. No. Okay, so that's where you the right... You have the right to find another apartment. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and it doesn't supersede the, the landlord's right to say, no cats in the house. This is my house. Yeah. Go buy your own. Do whatever yeah. the hell you want. So it's not a right then. It's a... Uh, um, because well, it's of, not a... Well, now... <laughs> I mean... My you, sisters will never listen to this, so <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> my sister, she's got this dog. Now you're now you're texting my sister saying, <laughs> "Make sure you're doing it." But uh, you know, my sister's got this dog. That's, I don't know. It's a little Chihuahua thing. It's like a long haired Chihuahua with love, big floppy ears. It looks like Gizmo or something, right? Mm -hmm. um, and she, it's it's her companion animal. It's she has papers for it. Yeah. So it's my birthday uh, a couple weeks ago, and we're we we go we go out to lunch. Because it's the summertime, I'm a teacher, so I'm just running with scissors. I can go out to lunch whenever the hell I want <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> in right. July and August. And uh, so we're, we go out to lunch, and she's there, and she comes in with this papoose on the, on her front, and she's got her dog. And uh, oh. <laughs> the manager actually walked up and's like, uh, is that, uh, you know, a companion animal? And she's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, it, it, again, it, it, that gets into just law and, and the, the legal aspects and ramifications of it. Right. Um. If you have, I, I wouldn't, if I was, I did rent houses and we had a limitation on pets. We said you can only have, you know, two pets. Well, you no rented, dogs. As, as a landlord, you rented out yeah. houses. Okay. And so as we, we rented those out and we had a limitation that's like you can have two pets, no dogs over 40 pounds or whatever it mm -hmm. was. And, and of course uh, you would know because of all the hidden cameras you have in your rental. Absolutely. You yeah. would know if they, they're yeah, actually. Sure. Uh, yeah, we do drive-bys. Uh, <laughs> Pop-ins. And, but uh, not frequent enough because they trash the place. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, regardless, uh, if someone had a, a, a companion animal, a seeing eye dog or you know a seizure dog, 
um, you know, these real work, real, these real working dogs. This was just her pet. Yeah. <laughs> and she had this thing as, as a pet for years and years, right? It's like 14 years old now or something stupid. And, uh, you know, she's just like, she's, you know, got some issues. Yeah. <laughs> Black sheeps. And so now, but so, so she's got papers so she can take the dog with her wherever she goes, whenever she goes. Right. But I think that's, I, I'm calling shenanigans. I'm throwing a flag on a play, calling shenanigans on that. Mm-hmm. That is not a companion animal. That is not. You know, a helper. That's just, I want to take my dog with me because I'm emotionally unstable. If right. that's the case, I'm bringing Percy to school and he's going to be my serenity cat. But you know, uh, again, though, you know, with, <laughs> I'm with, getting papers. I want a serenity cat. Yeah. So I can take him anywhere I go. But, uh, you know, again, with the millennials, everything is a malady. Yeah. You see, so this is my this is my uh, my Jesus. assistance dog because I have <laughs> social anxiety. Right, right. You know, and and it used to be the yeah. only people who had assistance dogs were uh, blind. Blind people, yeah. yeah. And now they, they've trained them for seizures and things, which is just which the, again, the work these dogs can do is yeah. just unbelievable. But to say I can't go out in public unless I have uh, my my uh, my Shih Tzu strapped to my my chest like a newborn baby, uh, you know, yeah. Where do you draw the line? <laughs> where, <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> With Percy the Serenity Cat, because <laughs> I'm well, I'm gonna work it. If I gotta go pay a shrink and go sit on a couch and make up a bunch of horseshit stories, uh, I'm gonna do it. I have to keep my skink in my pocket <laughs> because it calms me. <laughs> I reach in my pocket and pet it now and then. Oh, it's like taking fish heads to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> just oh. got them in your pocket and you're ready to go. I got a salamander in my <laughs> sock. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, so we don't. I guess. I, I guess we're kind of on the. You know, it's hard to define um, reasonable, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah. don't lawyers fight over that every day? Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. And it, it is marching that direction where, yeah, pretty soon you'll be able to. Um, you know, have a, a dog or a cat, you know, sitting on your lap while you're. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, you know, you can in, in a lot of cafes now, right? You can you can uh, not only have the dog on you know at oh, your sure. side, you can actually put it in your lap. And right, right. I've, I've actually seen people like feeding oh, yeah. their dog off, yeah, their, yeah. off their plate and stuff. I mean, come on. Oh, where was I? I mean, we're we're pet guys, Jamie. Yeah, but, I love animals. Yeah, I lo- yeah. I but just, uh, uh, you know, you got to be sensitive. There's to, a time and a place. Yeah, you got to be sensitive to the fact that other people might not and. Yeah. Uh, some people may be allergic. Some people may, may be frightened. You know, I had a, uh, I had, <laughs> I had employees at uh, at uh, my business where um, uh, they're, they're sisters, two two women. And they were raised without pets, and they were scared to death of of animals. Really? And uh, I brought a puppy, an eight week old puppy, and I'm just kind of playing this up. And, and the the one girl was was uh, she was kind of jumping back. She had I'm her hands puppy. in the air. Of, she's scared of the puppy. And I said, No, you can pet it. And once she got a little bit. You know, okay with the dog being around. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, stay away from the teeth because those fangs are poisonous. <laughs> and she, <laughs> she believed me. She's dick. like, <laughs> <laughs> it was a dick move. But, <laughs> uh, but I mean, some people are frightened of of dogs and cats if they have they, they haven't been socialized with them. You know, mm-hmm. um, so it may actually scare people to see, right? You know, uh, a skink in someone's <laughs> emerging from someone's <laughs> pants pocket. <laughs> hey, look what popped up. <laughs> A skink. Uh, <laughs> anyone listening to this, if you don't know what a skink is, Google it. It's uh it's a frightening little creature. It, it is. <laughs> oh man. All right. So uh we're here and we're we're broadcasting from the, the palatial studios uh here at the uh village workshop yep. in Northville. In the this Viceroy's is, office. In the Viceroy's office. Yeah. You've been doing this. How long is it? Because this is a this play. This is a, an amazing space. And, and when we do the podcast, I, I'd like to talk about like some of the stuff you got going on in here. So pick one machine because mm-hmm. there's like mm-hmm. probably 80, 90 machines in this building. We have everything that yeah. do uh, amazing things. Uh, what's one? Pick one machine uh, and and what what? Uh, how long have you been doing the, the workshop though? Uh, about two and a half years. We've been open. It's a uh, generically they're called maker spaces. Okay. Where people just can come in, and they join almost like a gym membership. Right. But instead of working out and doing something healthy, sure, sure, you just make stuff. Yeah. So eat, and we eat, have eat, uh, uh, pork rinds and then uh, yeah. work with a uh, uh, arc welder. Everything from three D <laughs> printers to uh, sewing to welding, uh, paint booths. We have everything. Right. Uh, right. Machine what's what's shop one of the cool things that, that came out of the workshop this that probably the, this week? Oh, a project. Yeah. A project. Um, well, oh my gosh! It, every day, so you got to pick one thing. Yeah, That's what I'm know, saying. No. It's uh, making it hard for you. I mean, look, look, look what we have right right here in the, the clock, in yeah. the room. We have a uh, one of our crafts 
uh, people that work here or at uh, attend the, the shop. Um, this fantastic uh, yeah. kind of a, uh, what would you call it? Like a, a kind of avant-garde design. Kind yeah, of yeah. Whimsical. It's about the height of a grandfather clock. Yeah, it's it's like a new age kind but of. It's uh, very Art Deco. Yep. Um, grandfather clock. It's mid-century very Mid-century cool. modern. You know what? It, it, the, the mid-century, it's a... Uh, uh, you, you 60s. Can, it's very. It's got a very 60 vibe. It, um, it does. It does. But it, it does. There's this kind of have this, its own. This artist named Slaw, uh, Stanislaw, uh, in Detroit, and his drawings. This would like pop right out of one of his drawings. It's uh, that 60s Mad Men, yeah, kooky. I just took a picture of it. I'm going to tweet it on the Animal Talk uh, Twitter. So kind of people want to abstract, run over there and whimsical. Check it. The clock itself almost looks like a kind of a Picasso kind of a thing, mm-hmm. where it's uh, misshapen and it's just it's it's beautiful. It, wood, uh, metal. Um, it's it's extraordinary. Who uh, who, cr- who created that? Uh, his name is Mike Brim. He's actually a friend of mine as well. Was oh, that Mike? Yeah, yeah, Mike. Mike? Yep. Yeah. Mike has excellent our, our Mike. tattoos. Our, our Mike. Our Mike did that. Yeah. <laughs> He's, uh, I love Mike. Just, just amazing. I'm like, I'm so glad that we hooked up and we're doing this again, because um, I want to steal Mike and Ethan from you because they're so cool. <laughs> yeah, they're they're uh, they're my cool friends. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. Oh, and, and you, and, uh, <laughs> two of two of my three oh, coolest yeah, right, friends. Right, 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 right. No, they are. I, I swear. I just, the second I met these guys, they are so funny and they are so nice. And really freaking creative. You got to look at this. Yeah. Animal Talk Radio uh, on Twitter. I just tweeted up the, the photo. Um, it, it's uh, You may have to go back in time because, you know, whenever you're listening to this. But uh, it's on there. Dig through. You'll find it. Um, Is that what we call a, a non sequitur? Because it's like a pet show and we start talking about the village workshop. People are well, getting confused. Well, that's where we're recording. No, that's where yeah. we're recording. It reminds me of, you know, you, know, you go to northern Michigan yeah. and um, and people are trying to just, just scratch out a living, right? Right. So you'll see like combination <laughs> businesses like taxidermy bridal shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got to stuff the dresses afterwards. So it's kind of actually. Right, yeah. right. Like bait and pizza. You know, they. Uh, <laughs> you got to make, you got to use every square footage, man. You're paying a lot, yes, lot yes. per square footage. And we're doing the same gotta, thing with this radio show. <laughs> that is it. Pets and, and clocks. Well, I mean, this is where we're working. And uh, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. That, uh, it's just this amazing space. Um, that that you invited me into to to do this, and uh, it's just a phenomenal thing. And that's what you've been doing for um, the last handful of years. You yeah. just got the, you got your mad scientist on, and yep. I'm you're kind going of an, for it. An armchair inventor, and I thought, what a cool place! To, you know, I, I've always wanted my own inventor's workshop, and I thought, you know, hey, l- let's open it up to uh, the community. Someone to help me pay for this shit. <laughs> that's what, that's, that's what like, I, told, I was telling somebody. I go, he was just looking for a way to, to yes. outsource the payment on yeah, these machines. I don't give a rat's ass about the community. I just want him to help me pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a jerk. All right, so, um, you know, dogs. Yeah. Right? It's okay. time for some funny. Okay. Oh, we got fu- some funny I do. I, it's on the page here, <laughs> and this might be fun. It's not going to be funny. Uh, we should have a sound bed or something to make it zany. But uh, there's a, a study, Brian. I was, like, checking this out. And, oh, uh, we're you'd be make interested. official. There's a study. There's a, there was a okay. study, yes. And uh, it's uh, dogs are able to communicate with uh, humans through mm-hmm. their different uh, barks and growls. But what if they could actually speak? What, what are some of the things dogs would say? If they could actually speak, you know, I saw a uh, like a Far Side uh, cartoon years ago, <laughs> and a guy invented a helmet where he could like this hearing device, and you know, it took him years to right, invent right. this thing. And he's walking on the street, and the <laughs> dogs are barking. It's translating. All the dogs are saying is, "Hey, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey!" <laughs> thousands upon thousands of dollars. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things a dog would be able to say if he could actually talk, mm-hmm. <laughs> I should probably have pre-read these. <laughs> Oh, no. Just kind of rip and read here for comedy. Mm. Uh, you realize when you guys <laughs> do it doggy style, uh, that's uh, species appropriate, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Where's your rim shot? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you just said doggy style, and I said rim shot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I wasn't supposed to roll in it, why did they make it smell so good? <laughs> Something a, a dog dog would say. Um, so if, the, if if a dog could, uh, okay, if a dog so could talk. If okay. a dog could talk, All he right. would say, hey, remember that time you lopped up my nuts? Yeah, not cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Something else a, a dog might say to Boy, this bobsled is picking up speed going downhill, isn't it? <laughs> hey, can you at least can you at least use the same brand of peanut butter every time? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's awesome. Good was lord. Awful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want filet mignon every night, or I revealed your wife your entire browser history. Oh, oh. So the dog is uh, threatening you. Uh, I might abandon this. <laughs> yeah, there's something about a groomer and fingers in a place, though. So that's uh, <laughs> uh, and the last one more thing a dog would would say to you, dude. You let me lick your face. You are sick. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Oh my god! Uh, you know, some people really are grossed out about that uh, dogs licking you. Um, well, we're going to talk about that in uh, the the second segment. It's, or the second half, and and their their reason. Oh, yeah, the reason is always you. Uh, uh, you know where his tongue's been. It's not like they do that. Con- well, they do constantly sometimes, but <laughs> um, I mean they're they're pretty clean animal as yeah. opposed to like a cat. A cat's right, right. bite. A cat's saliva is oh actually my God. pretty uh, uh, ridden with bacteria. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, well, we're gonna talk about dog saliva in in a little bit, but we were having pretty good luck with the emails. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Let's get back to that. Those were sticking to the electronic I'm, I'm media. I'm sweating. I, it's like I have the meat sweats or something. I'm like, I'm just that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but I do. I got another uh, email here, and this one's from uh, Tractor56. What's this? A letter for me. All right. I have a, a 10 year old uh, lab. I have a 10 year old lab. Uh, a neighbor gave him a rawhide slash leather chew bone, and he mm. chewed it up, then swallowed a good-sized chunk. Uh, the thing is, he's not been eating solid food since. It appears he's been corked for two weeks. Uh, he eats broth, light soup. Uh, I gave him castor oil um, and X-lax. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Any suggestions? Have you, a, have you had a dog get uh, backed up on yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Enough with the home remedies already. <laughs> kick, kick. Okay, <laughs> get yeah. thee to a yeah, veterinarian. Go, go to the vet. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that would be uh, two weeks. Is uh, that's a you know I, I'd say yeah, a, t- a day, two days would be like uh, you know two weeks is a little long. Yeah, to be that that could be uh, end up uh, tragically. You know, um, here's the thing with rawhides. Mm. Uh, dogs love them, but if right, they're right. scarfing them down, yeah. Uh, that's a, you, you, you gotta, you gotta avoid, they get them a pig or a, like a hoof, a, a cow hoof or something like that, that they can't, uh, readily swallow. But, um, yeah, you gotta get to the vet. That's, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, pets won't show their, um, uh, it happens more in cats than dogs, but they won't show their distress until they're really far along, yeah. uh, in, in excruciating pain or some kind of debilitating condition. So yeah, get to the vet right away. Yeah, my goodness, Tractor Fifty Six. What was? Yeah, that was Tractor Fifty Six. Spray some Windex on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad advice, radio. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, I got another one. This one's just uh, Sophie. <laughs> There's some mail here for you. Yeah, okay, Sophie. Sophie says uh, we have two male dogs. Mm-hmm. They're leaving Chicago at 38 miles. No, <laughs> we have two male dogs. We think they are trying to see who is top dog mm-hmm. in the house, uh, and it's scary. Uh, we've been spraying them with water bottles. That seems to stop the fight. After each fight, they're best friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, they play and lay close. They seem to really like each other. Uh, but then the other night, oh, but then another fight. So, so far, they have not hurt each other, but I'm afraid that it's coming. Uh, mm. It unnerves us. So yeah. dog fights are, are scary. They they are scary. A lot of times it's a lot of bravado. They'll be uh, they'll be barking and, and growling, and uh, but very rarely will it uh, will it end in, in you know uh, inflicting too much damage on the other dog. Did it? I'm sorry. Did it say what? How old the dogs were? Uh, no, just two male dogs. Okay. Yep. Well, here's the problem with that. Uh, are they intact? It, is a question. That's a good question. Um, but dogs, if you have more than one dog in the household, they have to figure out their own pecking order. No amount of training. You can spray them with a, with a, a you know, water bottle if you want to stop, but it's not going to resolve it. They have to figure it out. Most dogs will figure it out, and they'll be fine. Sometimes you'll have uh, dogs where there's always a little bit of fighting. Uh, try to eliminate things that cause it. You might see that a certain toy, you have a tennis ball out, and the dogs just, you know, they'll, they'll fight over it. 
keep that away. If you're given treats, make sure you give them treats on opposite ends of the room mm-hmm. so they, there's nothing to fight over. But they have to figure it out. Now, sure. In rare situations, um, they don't figure it out, and they just keep fighting, and then you're, you're, you're going to run into problems. But, um, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that training really doesn't impact. You can, uh, you, you know, you can try to engineer the, the environment so, uh, like I said, anything that causes the fight you know, um, is eliminated. But, yeah, they're going to have to figure out their own deal. I wish I knew what, what breeds of dogs and, yeah. and how old they were. Yeah, yeah. That would make a big difference as well. So I, it just uh, could they just be playing and it's just unnerving because it, it looks like they're going at it? Could be, could be. Uh, uh, in fact, that's a, that's a pretty common thing. Uh, when I used to train full time, you know, do dog training full time, people would call me in a panic saying, "You got to get over here. My dogs are going to kill each other." And you go over, they're they're just sparring and they're just loud and and, uh, and there's really not much to it. Right. Yeah. All right. So uh, another one here. This uh, we've been we've been dogging it up. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna switch it up. No, kitty, this is my pet pet. No, kitty, it's a bad kitty. No, kitty, it's my pet pet. <laughs> it's time for a kitty corner. All right, we'll head over to the, the cat corner here for this one uh, from SFO Chick. Uh, I've just grown to hate this cat. <laughs> we adopted him when he was 11 months old back in 2010. Um so this is a, what, eight-year-old cat, seven-year-old cat? Yep, seven-year-old cat. Yeah. Uh, he's never been a very friendly cat. Pretty much just keeps to himself and will come around for some affection once in a while. About three years ago, he started to pee everywhere, um, and he's added pooping to the list. Uh, I took him to the vet because friends said he might have diabetes or kidney problems, but even uh, even check, that all checked out normal. The doctor said it might be psychological. <laughs> With a cat, it could be a psychological problem. Uh, your cat's a dick. <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. Uh, we keep his litter box always clean. Uh, I read that cats hate dirty litter boxes. Could that be the reason? How do I get this damn cat to stop using the house as a litter box? I'm at wit's end. Um, I'd just get rid of him, but my daughter would kill me. Uh, I feel awful for saying this. I purchased a new uh, throw blanket, and he peed and poop all over that. Eight mm. times already. Mm. Help. Advice. Please. Well, here, here's the thing, and, and I say this in all sincerity. Yeah. Uh, are you okay, Jim? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah right. keep going. And I say this in all sincerity because I am a pet guy. Uh, some cats yeah. aren't worth a shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting our swears on. Yes, we are. <laughs> You're it's up to ca- two, I It's think. cathartic. It feels I know. good. I know. Well, good. I, we did radio. This was, this was a radio show for 12 years. And yeah, we weren't allowed and to say. Yeah, could not. Yeah. yeah so it's, now it's uh, buggers. I, and, yeah, I, I love it. Pee, all kinds of stuff. All right. So anyway, uh, cats. Yeah, you know the uh, cats. Cat people. You have to have an appreciation for a cat. Cats are not like dogs. Cats kind of tolerate us. I mean, there's a lot of memes <laughs> on the internet that, that speak to this. Yeah. And they um, they kind of have their own agenda. Some are very affectionate. Some are affectionate sometimes. They'll they'll you know bite your ear lo- lobes off while you're watching TV at other times. And they're just um, uh, they they they. They really are very, very independent. Now, all these problems, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's a ten-year-old cat or seven-year-old, eight-year-old cat, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And he's, yeah. you got to keep that litter box clean. Maybe right. add add one or two more litter boxes. That to me is the big problem because uh, that smell and the, you know trying to get that out of your uh, mm. your floors and carpets and stuff is just. It's horrendous. In rare cases, you know, they have to be euthanized if you can't if you can't fix it. So if if the cat's been checked out at the vet, and again, it may be a medical issue if it's getting worse. Um, but I would make sure the the litter boxes are clean. Clean them uh, two to three uh, litter boxes. Clean them every single day. Uh, some cats have very little tolerance for a, you know a dirty a soiled litter box, so uh, that that may be contributing to it. Um, and uh, you know, there's uh, there's cat rescues out there for this sort of thing, Jamie. You know, yeah. and and you know, we we part of a responsible pet ownership is making a commitment to the animal, right? That you're going to keep it for better or for worse. But everyone has their limit, and rather than see someone get really just kind of pissed off at their cat and just start hating it, you know, may it, it could be a, the time where you know maybe someone else can appreciate the cat, or he can live out the rest of his days at a cat rescue or something. Uh, you know that's um, that'll be a better environment for you and, and for the cat. So it's a, it's a tricky one, but you got a lot of problems piling on there. Uh, so I would start with the vet, go to the vet, make sure he's got a clean bill of health, get those litter boxes 
uh, cleaned up. Try to put everything on a schedule. Um, you know, feed them at the same times, water them at the same times. Usually it's more important for dogs to be on a schedule than cats, but still try to keep his environment as consistent as possible to lower the anxiety. Yeah. So this cat may just have some, you know, am- ambient anxiety may be a little high. But it's, 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 she's, I mean, it was like eight years, three years ago. Yeah. And you're dealing with it now. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> you're right, at your wit's right, end now. Right. Um, you know, you're eight years in. You're getting close to the end of the road. Yeah. There could be a farm visit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe leave the front door open. <laughs> just, okay. Animal lovers click. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Animal talk, uh, you got to take it with a grain of salt. We if you live it, near a bridge. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, how to alienate an audience. Yeah. One little bit. I got a cat, though. Look at my cat. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. Yeah, he's been chilling the whole time. Yeah, he... He loves me in his own way. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you let me lay on the kitchen table. I love that you let me sit wherever I want. Yeah, that's a good-looking cat. That's a well-behaved kitty. That's a that's a handsome beast, isn't it? It is. He's yeah. a little chubby. He likes to eat. Uh, so I'll tell you one thing I did mm-hmm. um, for, and, and people might find speaking this, of being chubby, find this rotten. But uh, <laughs> my cat had a. Uh, it was actually my daughter's. I had to take it for her. She couldn't keep it. Right. So um, he had some litter box amnesia problems. Oh. He was going every. 11 minutes, Jamie. It was like it's, it was a, it was a hobby, really? like a sport for him. He was just, uh, you know, peeing, shitting every, every few minutes. As soon as I cleaned it, he'd, he'd go in there again. So, um, and he was eating like a madman. Right. So my solution was I bought him a, uh, a cat food that he didn't like. So, <laughs> so he was eating less <laughs> because he hated his food. He, he lost a little bit of weight. He yeah. stopped. Shitting as much, uh, and uh, you know the, the problems went away. He he's grown to like the food right now, but he, he's not scarfing it down. So I think it's healthier for him too. In fact, uh, you know, um, we could all stand a little bit of, uh, you know, I, uh, I could yeah, I could use uh, you know, diet, a fridge full of food that I don't like. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, like healthy stuff you don't like, right? Yeah, you got to eat it sooner or later. Exactly. So that's what I did to my cat. So hey, at uh, this point in the show, we like to. Uh, <laughs> We like to, like we've done this before. Take, take, take a nap. <laughs> take a nap at this point. Are we going to take a nap? Everybody on Facebook, it's our... our Put your head down on your desk. where it's a, the, the 50 plus crowd, we'll all take a nap. <laughs> Put your head down on your desk. It's nap time. <laughs> Does anybody else smell bourbon? <laughs> the bottom drawer of the teacher oh, desk Oh, that's what we forgot. We didn't drink a thing before we started oh this. Oh my God. We're yeah. doing, like, doing this sober. It's like doing it without a nap. No, but we wanted to look at uh, the news okay. on the internet. It's a, a segment we like to call... Um, it's on the internet. It must be true. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, just about 61 years ago. Uh, no, this is recently, current news? <laughs> <laughs> it's the anniversary. It's oh, an okay, anniversary okay. bit of news. Uh, Elvis Presley released Hound Dog 61 years ago. In, in dog years, that's 427. Wow. <laughs> 61 years ago? Yeah. 427 dog years ago. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Holy. So, so how many? I thought it was so, still on the top 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. But hound dog, right? So there's yeah. an animal tie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I did with that. <laughs> Elvis, he's uh, and then there was like the stupid fact that I was like, like get out. Um, pretty prolific performer, you know. Just uh, while he was alive, he did a, did a lot of shows, yep. right? And women. How, how yeah. many show? <laughs> how many shows outside of the United States do you think he did? Uh, Elvis, yeah, outside the U.S. Well, you know, he did the U.S.O. thing, um, right? So didn't he uh, put a number on? Okay. <laughs> Hurry this along, right? <laughs> we ain't got all day. I know, no. Actually, uh, we do. We okay, well, how many performances outside the United States? Yeah, how many performances do you think did he, did he do outside the United 50. States? 50. Three. What? Three. In Canada. I was amazed. Really? I, well, it's on the internet. It has to be true. I thought you were going to say like 200. <laughs> yeah. I, I figured, you know, 50, uh, you know. Three. Three. Oh. In, in, they were all in 1957 in Canada. You know, um, he didn't do the USO thing. Right. He was he was it, in the army. He was in the army. That's what it was. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if he performed. For yeah, the... I don't know. I don't know. No. Nope. Uh, Left the guitar at home. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah. Uh, here's a, a simple, stupid, random fact. Again, found this one on the internet. It has to be true. Uh, zebras don't have black and white stripes. They're uh, they're black and they're covered with white stripes. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. Meg and Jack sitting on them, the white stripes. Well, so who, who makes that determination? <laughs> I don't know. They're black with white stripes? That's it, yes. That's it. Why, why would we assume they're white with black stripes? I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. Just faulty thinking. Ah. 
Yeah. This isn't. I mean, we're not. We're not stepping on any racial things here, are we? I mean, <laughs> no. I'm moving right along. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, so a 43 year old man. This has nothing to do. It's just a good joke. A 43 year old man in New Jersey was caught pleasuring himself at a screening of the Emoji Movie. <laughs> oh my God. He was charged with lewdness and could face up to 18 months in prison. Ugh. But it's about the closest thing to a thumbs up that movie got. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's that, just, had, that had nothing to do with animals. Uh, I just wanted to use that show. I need to take a shower. <laughs> okay, now I want my drink. So William Shatner is outraged. He's uh, he's uh, he's he's on a tirade. Oh, they they, um, they kicked him off Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. It's supposed to be a five year <laughs> mission. <laughs> Oh, that was Belushi doing anyway. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, there's a they were doing a cruise, right? They have all these cruises now, the themed cruises. You sure. know, you have the, you know, a couple rock bands will go, and, yep. and they'll you get to go on a cruise. Well, they were doing a Star Trek themed cruise, but Shatner is like all up in arms, and he's like trying to 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 sue him and not let him do it because part of the cruise is you get to swim with dolphins. Okay, and he's like, that's just wrong. It's uh, you know, it's uh, the uh, yeah, the cruise line. He's like suing him to to not let him use the Star Trek thing because he's outraged about that. Um, he's asking him to reconsider uh, aboard the USS Enterprise. It was Captain Kirk's duty to explore strange new worlds and seek out new life and situations um, and advance uh, and diversify our own. The explo- exploitation of any species for profit and entertainment would violate the prime directive. Surely you know, Star Trek fans would not appreciate this. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I don't I think it's a, an honorable thing to to stick up for sure animals and right. But you know what? Um, I I know people that have done the dolphin swim right, thing, and everybody posted on their Facebook. Yeah, and yeah. Ev- but you know what? People come back from that with almost a spiritual, you know, yeah. experience. Remember? I've done it. Have you? Yep. And it's it's uh it's an amazing thing. I think it gives people a uh, you know an, how hard it's not to make a blowhole joke right here. <laughs> 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 Trying. You know, you know Jamie, not. I tried I tried to rein this this thing in a little bit, but well, let me ask you. Besides your fixation with the blowhole, <laughs> um, please tell me you didn't take a, a sharpie and like point an arrow at the at the blow, <laughs> and then write some lewd comment. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, aside from that, yeah, d- don't you kind of get a, an appreciation for other species? And... It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah. it was great. It was, uh, it was moving. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because the, there's just it's like one big muscle. It's just this big powerful thing, and they were they were very sweet and gentle and kind. Yeah, but they're yeah. just so powerful. It's kind of like being horses are, are like that. Yeah, generally sweet and gentle um, once they've been broken and trained and beaten to submission. Uh, <laughs> but see, that, that's that's actually the mission for most zoos, right? Right. It's not about caging an animal. It's about... Appreciation. Appreciation and education, teaching right. people. You know, the, the new uh, penguin exhibit at the Detroit Zoo yeah. is freaking amazing, yeah. right? And I think people come away from that sort of thing with a, with a reverence mm-hmm. for nature rather than... And a penguin hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's exactly what I meant by reverence. <laughs> Can I wear one of these home? Can I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you drawing the mustache on the dolphin's nose with, with the Sharpie. Yeah, but Kirk, you know, Shatner, he's, he's upset. You know, so nothing yeah. for profit uh, and entertainment. Oh, he's got a new book out called Spirit of the Horse. Mm-hmm. It's all about his show horses. Ah. <laughs> it's kind of like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. It's wait, wait. Profit and entertainment. You wait, know, what? I just, William? I just, he, I just. He's, he's like owns like <laughs> he's got a ranch and he has show horses and he barrel rides and he's like upset uh, about swimming with the dolphins. You know, I just imagine him uh, ranting like this, uh-huh. drunk at a bar, eating like chicken fingers. <laughs> oh, William. Yeah, his little steak bites. Spitting a steak bite zip sauce on the person next to him. <laughs> Let me tell you about these dolphins. <laughs> Damn it. Oh. <sighs> All right, one more piece of news. Uh, again, it's on the internet, so it, it's got to it's gotta be true. Got to be true. Uh, a guy lost his junk climbing over oh. a wrought iron fence. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. There's, uh, I'll try to tie it back in, I promise. <laughs> I promise. A 27-year-old guy in Russia recently tried to climb over a wrought iron fence while he was drunk. He got impaled Ugh. by one of the spikes, and it ripped his junk off, mm. in all caps there. 
Uh, prepare to cringe, right? It's awful. It's awful. Oh uh, he suffered the worst groin injury this, this people have ever seen in this emergency room. Mm. One of the spikes on the top of the fence ripped through his jeans, uh, and he got impaled by it, and it ripped his junk off. He stumbled to, he stumbled to a nearby hospital, bleeding profusely. Uh, there's no word if doctors were able to reattach said junk or not, <laughs> but it doesn't See, sound here's like the pr- it. This is the problem with putting a wrought iron fence within walking distance of a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> or stumbling distance of a hospital. Right, right, right. People will try to jump it. Uh, was he, I mean... <laughs> I don't know. I don't. <sighs> uh, and just, you know, with that thought, don't forget to spay and neuter. Yeah. <laughs> See, I tied it. You tied animals it Animals back. <laughs> oh, but that, that's so horrible to think about he, that. He took the uh. idea a little too far. <laughs> I think. Uh. John Wayne Bobbitt, remember? <laughs> yes, remember? Yeah. That was that was like L- the big L- first cut off penis in yeah. the news story. Yeah. That was the big one. And uh I'll well, tell you what, I left swiped her on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> he oh. I met him. You did? I met John Wayne Bobbitt, yes. Could you, um, you, and you couldn't help but look is, at his his crotch, right? Like no. uh, you got nothing in there. He's like, son of a bitch snuck up on me. He, and so here it is. What? So I'm at uh, I'm, I was at uh, the radio station in Lansing, ninety two point one, the Edge mm-hmm. in, in Lansing, doing the weekends and the overnight. So it's Sunday night. I'm there from you know uh, midnight to to six in the morning, and yeah. at six o'clock, you know, I got to do some production stuff and what have you. So I'm there, and the morning show kicks in, and the morning show girls, and he's on on their morning show as as a guest, right? So I'm over in the production studio and and working away and, and cut the tapes and whatever. And uh, I hear the door open, but people come in and out of that studio all the time. So I wasn't paying attention because I was doing my work. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm, 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 I feel a, 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 a wrist like on my, on, my la- on my thigh, and I hear snip, snip. And I look down, and there's a pair of scissors like right in front of my junk. And it's John Wayne Bobbitt holding a pair of scissors oh, in front of my stuff. That's his only, that's his only shtick now, isn't it? That's a- <laughs> That's all he's got. And I'm like, I was like, what the fuck? And I just, I looked at him and I was, because I didn't know it was him, right? I thought maybe it was like some other intern or one of the goofy sales guys there early making a joke about, hey, there's the missing dick guy over there. Uh. But it was him. And I'm like, I was like, he was like, oh, I'm just kidding. I'm I'm John. I'm like, oh, hi, John. Get away from me. (laughs) So he takes that that on the road? (laughs) That's his show "Ah, on the road. There's the scissors. Get it? Get it? I'm the guy without a penis. (laughs) Oh my God! So yeah, that was uh, that was my brush with greatness there. You know, you always play your strongest <laughs> card, right? Like that's hey, you know, he's he's uh, turning lemons into lemonade, right? That's it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's a much better metaphor. <laughs> something, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, how much more can of this can we take? Really, how much? How much uh, more oh, can I, we? Actually, I was done 15 minutes ago. <laughs> so I'm past my limit. How much more could we, we possibly endure? Uh, well, let's end it with a, a, a bad animal joke. Bad animal joke of the week. Okay. Hey, Brian. Hey, Jamie. Why do gorillas have big nostrils? <sighs> Jamie, why do gorillas have big nostrils? Because they have big fingers. <laughs> Oh, my God. That's it. Oh. So, all right. So you're obviously interacting with a lot of third graders. <laughs> I, I do. That's my life, man. <laughs> I think we should stop, though. Yeah. All right. So uh, Twitter is uh, Animal Talk Radio on Twitter, animaltalkradio.com. And uh, so like, subscribe, follow, thumbs up. Ring the bell, all those things that you're supposed to do on all the social medias. But uh, appreciate you tuning in. If you'd like to send a question in, Jamie at animaltalkradio.com, you can send in a comment. Uh, <laughs> we get letters, lots of letters. We might get some hate mail. Um, you know, My we'll, comment is stop. <laughs> stop. Just stop it. Cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll do it. Uh, Brian, do you have some fun? Yeah, this is a lot of fun. I, I I feel really good. I think uh, I think it'll be a little sore tomorrow. Okay, but I think uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm happy. <laughs> right on. All right, thanks everybody, uh, and uh, we'll see you next time on Animal Talk. See ya. <laughs>